My name is Richard Williams. I am a survivor of the Oklahoma City Federal Building bombing. I was responsible for all the federal buildings in the state of Oklahoma, the Murrah Building being one of those. I had responsibility for it since the beginning, since the building was opened in April of 1977, so I knew almost everyone in the building as a co-worker, as a friend, and they became my family. On that day, on April the 19th, 95, the perpetrators who parked the Ryder truck with 4,800 pounds of explosives in front of the building, it changed our lives forever. Uh, I was very fortunate to be a survivor. I was in my office that morning. I was dug out of the rubble and carried out of the building by an Oklahoma City policeman, my hero. And I make sure that people understand that real heroes are those people, not baseball players, not football players. They are first responders. And that's why I'm sitting here today is because of my hero. I think I was able to get through what had happened for several reasons. One was my family. They were very supportive of me after the bombing. They were before also. But after the bombing, they helped me by helping me heal physically and mentally. And I needed that support base. I needed what I call the three F's, family, faith, and friends. Because without those three things, I don't think I could have done as much as I did as early as I was able to accomplish it. My family was probably the most important thing that there ever could have been. My own intestinal fortitude, my own strength, as my wife calls it, carried me through the physical side of it. But I needed that support base from them, from the friends, faith in the family to help me carry me through the difficult days. Because of my injuries, I was slowed down a little bit. I wasn't stopped. And my intent became to make sure that people understood what happened that day, who the people were, how they were affected, and where we've gone since then. So I went back to work after 45 days after, uh, against my doctor's wishes and my wife's wishes and went back in just to try to get involved in something and trying to be a part of something positive. Uh, we had to put the buildings back together because they were damaged completely by the, the blast itself. So that was very good for me to get back to work and doing something that I knew how to do rather than sit home and feel sorry for myself or learn what the new normal was. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the people that I knew, the friends who were as became some, in some cases as strong. But I also learned that I needed to listen better. I learned that I could slow down a little bit. Work wasn't the most important thing that I did. Family was. I learned that uh, you could move forward and heal at the same time. But you had to do something positive. It had to be something good out of that evil in order for you to get that feeling of accomplishment. Our mayor uh, at that time appointed a 300-member task force to determine if there was a need or a want to have a memorial. And the response we got back, written responses, was yes, we have to do something. One, we have to protect that sacred ground where the federal, federal building stood. Two, we have to make sure those people never forget the 168 that we lost. And three, we have to educate. We have to make sure people understand about the impact of violence and how it affects people. If, if we can reach one person, we felt like that we could keep this from happening again. I think the first thing I would give advice to them about would be to seek those three F's. You need to find those three things, a family, friends, and, and faith that could help you get through those difficult days. There is no blueprint for healing. Uh, I know people 22 years later now that still haven't healed from the bombing. There, there is no closure. Uh, I think that's a word that people really use in terms of trying to finalize something. It's been a year now. Let's get over it. It's been five years. You have to know how to move forward, but not lose track of what happened in the past and never forget what happened. But positive things are the things that carry you through the difficult process and the difficult days. And I think that's what the memorial process did for me. It gave me a purpose to become a part of something that would teach to the impact of violence, which is what that was. That was violence. And people would understand that, uh, that good can come from evil.